Thank you very much. Did anybody else besides me have to hold Andy up this morning in that chair? That chair should have six legs, people. <laughs> Folks, before I give my speech this evening, the staff here at the mansion have asked, please do not stand on top of the chairs or tables during the standing ovation at the end of my speech. <laughs> so thank you in advance. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Firstly, I would like to welcome you all to Andy and Rachel's wedding. And more importantly, thank you for attending their roast. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Ricky, Andy's twin brother, and I will be representing the category of best man this evening. <laughs> I would like to thank Andy for giving me this honor, and more importantly, I would like to thank Rachel on landing herself such a mensch. <laughs> you know, being twins has led Andy and I to some unique opportunities over the years. In fact, just about 20 minutes ago, before we came in here, Rachel's dad pulled me aside, thinking that I was Andy. <laughs> and what he said to me was, Ricky, uh, he actually said to me, Andy, now that you're part of our family, I welcome you. But I have a strict policy when it comes to my daughter. Absolutely no refunds, no exchanges, and absolutely no returns. <laughs> now I also learned from Jean that the wedding ceremony here is not the only ceremony this evening. Actually, for those of you that want a little fun after the reception, Jean's going to have a cutting of their joint credit card ceremony after the wedding <laughs> and a little bonfire to burn those joint checking account books. Now, where is Rachel? Where is she? There she is. Rachel, I'd like to say that I don't think I've ever seen you look so beautiful as today. I truly admit that. And I think I speak for everyone here by saying you look absolutely stunning. Give it up, folks. And as for Andy, well, he just looks stunned. <laughs> yes, Andy, you're finally married. No. Did anybody see Andy up there? He was actually sweating bullets if you didn't see that. I was right there. <laughs> so before I begin the destruction of Andy's character, I would like to thank some very important people here tonight. I, would, I think you'll all agree with me that the bridesmaids look beautiful in their dresses, and Rachel wants me to actually thank them for all the help that they've provided, not only today, but in the weeks and months leading up to the wedding. I would like to take this opportunity to personally thank Rachel for not letting Andy choose the dinner menu this evening. Because if he did, we'd all be at the Olive Garden, eating chicken parmesan, <laughs> passing around buckets full of endless salad, and feeding each other garlic knots. Now folks, many of you don't know this, but Rachel actually approached me about two months ago to go over with me what my duties are as best man. I'd like to go with them, if you have a second. <laughs> now I'm not gonna read a few because Rachel's list is quite long, but number one, please make sure that Andy has a good time at the bachelor party. I'm gonna check this one off because at the bachelor party we went up to MGM Grand in Foxwoods. We all won some money and Andy did indulge in several alcoholic beverages. <laughs> now number two, please make sure that groomsman Tom Barcosi does not get naked at my wedding. <laughs> now folks, for me to ask Tom to not get naked tonight is like waving a red flag in front of a bull. It's just not something that I'm willing to do. Now finally, number three, please don't use any bathroom humor. Now, although I have agreed, it will be difficult not to make any natural gas jokes since Andy has worked at the utility and gas company for the last 10 years. Now, like most Frangos, Andy likes to eat. Over the past few years, Rachel has made several attempts to master some of Andy's favorite dishes. And like any Iron Chef, Rachel realized early on that the food critic over here doesn't always vote po positively. One evening, after making Andy some stew, it was apparent that Andy did not feel that the dish met his expectations. And it was at this point that he shared with Rachel that this isn't how my mommy makes it. 
It is apparent by how much weight Rachel and Andy have lost that the only dish that Rachel can actually master is making toast. <laughs> it's at this point that Rachel realized the easiest thing to make Andy for dinner is reservations. <laughs> now Andy has always searched for a woman that will take care of him like his mommy did. In fact, what you might not know is that every day, Rachel packs Andy his lunch. Isn't that sweet, folks? Yeah. Now, Rachel, don't forget to cut those crusts off. Make sure Andy doesn't miss the bus for school. Bye, Andy. Have a good day. Pull up and eat a ride home. This happens every morning, folks. Now, more importantly, Rachel, don't forget to pack Andy his napkin. Yes, folks, one time Rachel forgot to pack Andy's napkin, and Andy made it a point to call Rachel to discuss this disaster. <laughs> now, Andy and Rachel have had good communication over the years, and Andy is excellent at telling Rachel when she makes poor choices. When she does, Andy calls a meeting, and there have been several of these meetings over the years. Now, folks, I can only imagine one of these meetings being like a scene from The Apprentice, when Donald Trump goes to his boardroom and he disapprovingly berates an employee. I think we're all here today because Rachel has never been fired from Andy's boardroom. Now typically the meetings that Rachel and Andy have revolve around their tenant and landlord relationship. They have meetings to discuss the core purchases for the house. Don't get rid of those receipts, Rachel the thermostat settings, and Rachel's rent collection. Now, I personally knew that Rachel was the right girl for Andy when she agreed to pay the 6% interest on her first late rent payment. <laughs> now, just like Rachel, I think we have at all, at some point, experienced Andy's frugality. In fact, just last week, when meeting up with Andy, I noticed that Andy was peeling off unmetered stamps to glue back onto his bills. A trick learned from our father. <laughs> now, in all seriousness, it takes the love and hard work of two people to make a marriage work. As a married couple, you are both equals in calling a meeting. In fact, I think the wedding today serves as Rachel's first meeting. <laughs> Can you all please stand now and join me in a toast to the bride and groom? Today, I am the best man only in name, and Andy, it has been a tr true privilege to be by your side for the last 32 years. Andy, from one married man to another, my advice is simple. A happy wife is a happy life. <laughs> I would also like to say that it has truly been a pleasure to watch the two of you grow together over the last few years. I would like to end my speech with one of my favorite quotes regarding marriage. You don't simply marry someone because you can live with them. You marry them because you simply can't live without them. You two are very lucky to have found each other, and I am proud to call you both family. Everyone, please raise your glasses now and join me in a toast to Mr. and Mrs. Andrew Franco. <laughs> Once again, a nice round of applause, ladies and gentlemen. Down one time. Okay,